After years of being a roller coaster and theme park fan, I finally had the opportunity to visit every single Cedar Fair park in North America. And I can confidently say I saved the worst for last. Michigan's Adventure is located in Muskegon, which is absolutely in the middle of nowhere of Michigan. They're home to seven roller coasters, and the only one that is noteworthy is Shivering Timbers, and it was closed when I went. It was very disappointing. As someone that's been to almost every major amusement park in the U.S., this was the one ride I was most looking forward to. And so it was sad that the one time I made it all the way out there, it was not open. Open, but even if it was open, that would not change my opinion on this park because I can work with having a good park even if your marquee attraction is closed. It's still possible to have a good time. But let me tell you, this is a very sad, depressing amusement park, and I can confidently say I do not recommend it. You should go literally anywhere else. So let's talk about this place. What's being done well, and what could be done better? And I want to first start with the entry experience. Michigan's Adventure, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is located pretty much in the middle of nowhere. And I'm both referring to where it is located in the state of Michigan, as well as the physical location of the park. You are literally driving past houses to get here. You cannot see the park until you pull up. And it's really funny because on the main roads, the signs say amusement park this way. They don't even list the name of the park. But I will give credit where credit is due. Michigan's Adventure makes a bold first impression when you pull up to it because Shivering Timbers is absolutely enormous. It dominates the skyline as you're pulling up here. I mean, this is a very cool parking experience. I was absolutely blown away by the sheer size of this ride. And so I will say, when you first see that attraction, it gets you excited for your visit. It's also about the only thing in Michigan's Adventure that looks big. By the time you park and make it to the front entrance, get ready to see everything scaled down. This is a very small park entrance. And it's very weird to me that they have a ride the size of Shivering Timbers. Because even after you make it in the front gate and you look around, it does not take very long to walk from point A to point B. Probably the longest walk you would have would be from like where Shivering Timbers is to over by Thunderhawk. And that's not really because of the size of the property. That's actually because Michigan's Adventure isn't even a complete circle. It gets so close to being a full loop, but then it just doesn't quite make it there and why they didn't decide to make this a complete circle is beyond me. I think that should be step one of fixing Michigan's adventure. Make the park a circle. When you make it in the front gate, you look around, you have corkscrew right in front of you. Towards the left is Camp Snoopy, which in my opinion is the nicest area of the park. And one of the things that I think Michigan's Adventure actually does really well, it was recently renovated and it looks great. This is a very nice kids area. I think that whatever Cedar Fair did to that area, they should do to the rest of the park because it looks like the rest of the park has not been touched in decades. And you might think I'm exaggerating, but actually I don't think that statement is that far off. The last new roller coaster that Michigan's Adventure got was Thunderhawk, which was a used Vekoma SLC from Giaga Lake, and it opened in 2008. They did recently repaint it though, so at least the colors were nice. I had heard from a lot of people that this is the best Vekoma SLC, and so actually I was pretty intrigued to ride it, because I'd heard actually surprising good things, and that was another thing that I was let down by, because in my opinion, this feels like every other Vekoma SLC I've ever done. I wouldn't say it's the worst. Is it a good ride? Personally, I say no. If they want to make it good, then they're going to have to do some updates like what they did at Maurice Piers. That is the only good Vacoma SLC in America, in my opinion. So Thunderhawk was disappointing. No shivering timbers. What else does Michigan's Adventure have? They have an arrow corkscrew. Not really a whole lot to it. That's one of those rides where what you see is what you get. And actually, that's kind of the motto of the park. Because it's so small, you could stand pretty much anywhere in the park and look around. And everything you see is all there is to the park. There's not really any nooks or crannies or discovery moments. Like, it's fun when you get to visit a theme park and wander around and discover new pathways, different rides. And that just doesn't exist here. Which, okay, it's a small park. I understand that. I've been to a lot of small parks. Not saying there's anything wrong with having a fairly small amusement park. If you make up for it, you can make up for having a lack of land with having good rides. And unfortunately, Michigan's Adventure does not have any good rides that I got to experience. I know, yes, I wish that I had gotten to do Shivering Timbers, and that does look to be a very good ride. Excluding that, everything else is pretty much garbage. Wolverine Wildcat was not a good wind roller coaster. I would love to see that get arm seed. I think has a lot of potential. Zach Zoomer is a Woodstock Express, so a kid's ride. They have a wild mouse, and let me just say about this wild mouse, don't even bother. If you're a coaster enthusiast wanting the credit, either do this first thing in the morning when it doesn't have a line, or skip it. We made the mistake of waiting for it and waited almost 90 minutes because of how they operate it. I don't know what they're thinking operating it the way they do, but they only allow one car to go around the course at a time. I don't know if you're familiar with how wild mice coasters work, but the whole point is that you can have multiple going at once. So picture this, Mad Mouse has seven cars on the track and every single one of them except for one is on the brake run. And they can only unload and load one car at a time. So there is absolutely no point in having all 
of those cars on the course. It would literally be faster to just have two cars on the track because it is a minute and a half ride, but it is a 10 minute experience because you spend almost nine minutes sitting on the block brakes and there's not even shade. So we went on a hot day and we're burning up there. It's not a good ride and it's not worth it for the credit. Just skip it. And that's pretty much all the rides here. They have a Katie coaster in Camp Snoopy, but that's about it. The park is definitely lacking in the thrills department. So, okay, what about flat rides? Well, they don't really have those either here. No drop tower, no star flyer, scream and swing, really anything. Okay, so what do they have? Well, they have a water park. If you like water slides, then I think Michigan's Adventure actually has some options. I'll be honest, I did not venture into the water park, so I will not make any comments about how good the quality of the water park is here, but it seemed like they at least had some options. Okay, so Michigan's Adventure doesn't really have any good rides. Well, what about shows? Mmm, no. No shows here. Okay, what about food? Everything here is pretty standard amusement park food and not good amusement park food either. There's very few restaurants. We ate at Coaster's Drive-In, which is right at the front of the park. It's chicken tenders, pizza, and burgers, and it felt like they just pulled it out of the freezer and had been sitting there for a while. We even tried to order milkshakes to maybe make the meal a little better and those machines weren't working. It just seemed like the employees didn't care, and that pretty much goes for everywhere in the park that we went. It didn't seem like anyone actually wanted to be there. You know, I just reviewed Valley Fair not too long ago, which is another Cedar Fair Park, and it is a night and day difference visiting Valley Fair versus Michigan's Adventure. You go there and it is bright, happy colors. It has such a positive atmosphere, and that does not exist at this park. This is not a fun place to go. It feels like the owners did the absolute bare minimum that they could and figured that people would just show up anyways because it's an amusement park. Like a prime example of this, I know this is a very small thing, but this is just an example. Outside of Coaster's Drive-In, they have two cars there to kind of go with a theme. You look at the license plate of one of them, it literally says sample on it. They didn't even bother get a cool, cute license plate for the car or even remove the license plate if they're just going to leave the sample on. But they're like, no, it's fine like that. You walk around to the Midway Games, they don't take change and none of the change machines worked. So no one was even playing the games. There were multiple rides that were just closed. I don't know if that was due to staffing or mechanical issues or what. It didn't seem like any of the issues we had were due to COVID, which I know is going to be some people's assumption that, okay, these are difficult times in the amusement industry and I can understand that. Not everything is going to be 100%. But these basic ideas and things that I'm talking about that are problems with Michigan's adventure would be there regardless of COVID. I feel like this park gets absolutely no love and that is very clear in how few attractions and investment has gone into this park in the past 10 years. And it seems like even the current management doesn't care to make the park better. I mean, you walk around the pathways. First of all, there's no one there, but it is not well landscaped. They're playing basic pop music over the park, which okay, is fine. But clearly they are having a problem with their audio system because the music tracks just kept on skipping. It'd get to a part of a song and then it'd jump to later in the song. And it was actually really funny and they were just totally okay with that is another example of how it seems like no one actually cares about this park. I think Cedar Fair should be very ashamed of themselves for the way that they run this place. It does not fit that standard that you see at each one of their other parks. I love this chain. I love what they do with Kings Island, Kings Dominion, Cedar Point, Knott's Berry Farm. They take very good care of those parks. And so it's really depressing when you go to Michigan's adventure and see what is an absolute dumpster fire of an amusement park. If you're a coaster enthusiast, if you want the credits, fine, go ahead. I understand. But don't expect this to be a place that you'd be wanting to make repeat visits back to. I hate that I didn't get to ride Shipping Timbers because it means that I have to make a return trip back here, which is something that I really don't want to do. People go to amusement parks to be happy, but honestly, walking around Michigan's adventure, I was just sad and depressed, and it wasn't because Shivering Timbers was closed. This is just not a good atmosphere. You know, I've been to amusement parks all over the world. I've seen so many incredible places. I've seen what parks do right and what parks do wrong, and I try to always see the good in everything. But with Michigan's adventure, it just seems like one thing after another, I can confidently say that I think this is a top three worst park I've ever been to in my entire life. I'm not trying to rant. I'm not trying to be nitpicky. I'm trying to encourage Cedar Fair to do better because they have the power to make this park better and they aren't. That's my biggest problem with this place. So anyways, I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you think of Michigan's Adventure? Do you agree with the points I've made? Do I have it all wrong? Is this the best park in the world? Let me know down in the comments below. And of course, stay tuned for more park reviews here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.